これで決めるか。So Akira Kurosawa may be the undisputed champion of the samurai film genre, and because of that, there seems to be a tendency in the West to praise him at the expense of all the other great directors in this genre. Directors like Mitsuguchi, Kobayashi, Hideo Gosha, all of them have made groundbreaking films that were. Just as influential, if not more so, than Kurosawa films. A great example of this is 1964's Three Outlaw Samurai, directed by Hideo Gosha. In this genre, this film is top tier. I very often hear people talk about this film when mentioning the best, and this is actually this director's first film, and that's very impressive, considering just how many people will put this in their top tens. But for me, this movie is proof that sometimes you need to rewatch films. And the reason I say that is because the first time when I saw this, I actually didn't really think it was all that great. I thought it was like average. I think maybe I was expecting something else. I don't know what I was expecting. And maybe at the time I just didn't see enough Chambara films. But whatever the case was, when I just recently rewatched this movie, I now see why so many people rave about it. This is an excellent film. And now I finally agree with all the praise that this film gets. I should have included it in many of my lists. And this is really just a unique story. This isn't something that we've seen a million times. This film definitely has the right to be compared to Kurosawa, and it just has that same kind of fun and exciting action that you see in Kurosawa films. But what's unique about this is it has its Dark moments, and I was actually surprised just by how the mood is in this film. It's actually a origin story of a Japanese television series of the same name, but when I tried to look for more information on it, there isn't really much. I can't really pull it up anywhere or see footage of it, but eventually I would like to just track it down. But Three Outlaw Samurai, I think, just serves as An almost ugly reflection of the noble samurai that we see in so many Kurosawa films. It's like the cynical version of Seven Samurai. And actually, in an interview with Vanity Fair in 2017, the director Ryan Johnson stated that this film was one of his inspirations when he wrote Star Wars: The Last Jedi. And when I watched this. I think that maybe he took some of the more cynical themes that was in this film, but really, besides that, I don't really think this has anything to do with the Last Jedi. And I actually wasn't really a fan of that film. I know it's very divisive, but Three Outlaw Samurai isn't all doom and gloom like the Last Jedi. It features some pretty wild fight sequences. It has three very charismatic performances. So this story follows peasants, similar to Seven Samurai, and what they do is they kidnap the daughter of this corrupt magistrate, 
they keep her in this tiny farmhouse. And eventually, this is where they meet up with Tetsuro Tamba's character. At first, he doesn't really care. He just wants to watch them and see what happens. But eventually, he agrees with them and then he decides to step in and help them. And meanwhile, the magistrate goes to just these extreme lengths to get revenge on these peasants and anyone else that tries to help them. And of course, eventually it involves the three main characters, the three samurai, hence the title. And it's just a pretty wild ride from there. Overall, I found this to be just exciting. I think the story is very unique. But it's also simple, it's about rebels standing up to the government. Those are always good stories. It's unusual in that the main character goes along with the hostage situation. Usually with movies, it's the opposite. And I guess that could kind of make the main character in this a bit of an anti-hero. And because it's, you know, different, I think this is what makes this movie much more memorable and interesting than a lot of other films. And I feel like I have to point out the acting, you know, as with pretty much all Japanese films in this era. The performances and the drama are very heightened. It seems like you're watching a play at times. But, you know, if you look beyond that, there really is a complex story here. And actually, it feels pretty contemporary in many ways that Kurosawa films don't. The samurai in this aren't honorable. They're not even moral characters, per se. One character is very cynical of the world, and he just decides to watch what goes down for fun. The other character is the magistrate's bodyguard, and the other is this drunken, also cynic guy who just leeches off of his employer. These are hardly the upstanding characters that you get in Seven Samurai. Yet, each one of them I'll say is very charismatic and distinct. And because of that, it makes a lasting impression. Tetsuru Tamba plays Shiba in this film, the main character. And he also stars in the same role in the Three Outlaw Samurai TV series. Three years later, he would go on to gain international fame playing Tiger Tanaka in the James Bond film, You Only Die Twice. If you're Tanaka, how do you feel about me? I love you. I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> I feel like he's the most reminiscent of Toshiro Mofuni's character in Yojimbo and Sanjaro. The actor Hira, his character in this is just very cool. He's the magistrate's skilled bodyguard. And he's pretty reminiscent actually of Tetsuya Nakadai's character in Yojimbo. And the lesser known actor is Samu Nagato. He actually probably gives the most memorable performance out of the three of them. He plays this kind of goofy, you know, kind of like Mifune's character in Seven Samurai. He's the much-needed comedy relief in this film because it's actually very serious and it does get dark. But overall, all three of these characters are just very charismatic and likable. Again, this film is much smaller in scale compared to something like Seven Samurai. But I feel like Gosha here just uses everything at his disposal. The battle sequences in this are just brilliant. But actually even more impressive than the fights is just the occasional and just sudden bursts of violence. They appear almost out of nowhere. I find these fights too to be a lot more realistic. There wasn't jumping around and clinging swords. And each one of these fight sequences is just very engaging and energetic. So Gosha definitely did a great job with the fighting in this. And while the plot may feel a tad predictable, I feel like the characters just all give so much personality and they each one of them just feels like real people. The villagers, the hostages, the mercenaries, all of them shape the plot in this way that feels very organic and it's not contrived ever. Even the magistrate's daughter, who just could have been, you know, one-dimensional and it wouldn't matter. She actually has an entire character arc in this. 
and she changes her views over the course of the film. This is actually a theme throughout where characters just constantly change sides and make deals. It's very much in stark contrast to the cliché honorable samurai that are just one dimensional and can only do good. I think the tone feels more like a spaghetti western, more so than just the films that were directly inspired by them. You get themes of corrupt power, shifting allegiances, unpredictable killers, and actually the ending to this feels a lot like a homage to the western film The Searchers. And you could actually compare this to the Good, the Bad, the Ugly, that's my favorite western of all time. Tamba's character is very much like the man with no name, Clint Eastwood's character. He doesn't talk much. Mostly he just uses his sword to do all the talking. I feel like that's very Clint Eastwood-like. He's usually pretty serious, but still you'll get some smiles out of him. In the end, he defends good, but he also watches out for himself. Nagato in this isn't nearly as selfish as Tuko, who plays the ugly, but I'd say he definitely falls within that character type. He's goofy and a little dumb, but he's also very capable, and anyone that tries to cross him learns their lesson very quickly. And his character is just very likable, even though he does make a few mistakes. So you'd probably assume that the Magistrate in this would be the bad. And what he does do is he's just got this nasty samurai working for him that does all his bidding. And this character works as his mouth and as his muscle. But he's a completely unpredictable villain. He's a sick character. And he brings a lot of tension to the film. So I watched the Criterion Blu-ray version of the film. Usually Criterion gives you a lot of extras, but surprisingly this one hardly had anything. Mostly just a theatrical trailer. And because of that, you could just see this movie just being lumped in, you know, in a box set with a bunch of other films. It could have been in the Rebel Samurai box set that I had. But besides the lack of extras, I think overall this is definitely a top tier samurai film. I think the only negative maybe is that it drags a tiny bit in the middle, but it has just such a strong beginning and end that it doesn't really matter. Hideo Gosha is just a brilliant and capable director. I think more people should just check out his films. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to try to find this film, you can easily get it on Amazon, get the Criterion Blu-ray. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to help support me, you can check out my Patreon. And like always, thanks for watching, and again, Happy New Year.